Planet Dolan. From people just seconds away from death to the lighter side of Nazis, we look at nine innocent photos with chilling backstories. Hi there, my name is Doopy, and I'm here to tell you some really interesting things that you might not have heard before. Number nine. This photo of what looks like two kids playing around with the grade school science experiment is actually something much creepier. Taken in 1975, the picture shows brother Sean and Michael McKilkin as they reach the summit of California's Morro Rock. Noticing that their hair was standing on end, their sister Mary took a photo. What they didn't realize was that this was a tall tale sign of an imminent lightning strike. After just starting to make their way down, a bolt of electricity hit Sean directly, stunning his brother and sister as well. But luckily Sean survived with only third degree burns. So lesson to learn, next time your hair stands on end, run like hell. Number 8. Sure, this one just looks like a guy taking a shower, but the truth is much sinister. Pictured is Travis Alexander, a 30 year old marketing salesman from Arizona, and it's the last picture of him alive. His ex-girlfriend Jody Arias would soon stab Travis in the chest, slice open his throat, and shoot him in the head. The body would be found days later by Travis's workmates, still slumped in the shower. The camera was found in the washing machine along with some bloody clothes. The evidence soon pointed to Jody who came up with several stories before saying it was in self-defense. The jury didn't see it that way though. Number 7. Look at this lovely snapshot. A nice day, people out doing their thing. Too bad it's all about to take a devastating turn. It's August 15th, 1988, and that red car in the right corner is packed with 300 pounds of explosives. It's about to be detonated very shortly after this photo is taken, killing 29 people and injuring over 300. This photo was found inside a camera, underneath rubble of a nearby building, which tells you what happened to the photographer. The man and child in the picture are Spanish tourists who both survived, but at least six other kids were killed that day. Number 6. Take a look at this harmless party self- Uh, you already know where this is going. So what makes this selfie so terrible? Well, the guy on the right just murdered his parents. Tyler Hadley brutally murdered his mother and father, bashing them to death with a hammer. After tidying up the mess, he decided to throw a house party because no parents, no rules, right? The other guy in the photo is Tyler's best friend Michael, who had just been shown the dead bodies by Tyler. Michael took a selfie with Tyler, knowing it would be their last one, then left the party and called the cops. Number 5. Martial arts can bring people together from all backgrounds and beliefs, even terrorists. Well, future terrorists. This snap is of none other than Osama bin Laden in his youth with Taiwanese judo coach Jimmy Wu. It obviously wasn't until after 9-11 that Jimmy realized he had taught the world's most wanted man how to do a judo flip. But that was way back in 1984 before his student would help found Al-Qaeda and orchestrate plans to mass murder civilians. In fact, Jimmy turned Osama down, telling him he was too tall and skinny for judo. Hopefully that's the only mass murderer in Jimmy's photo album. Number 4. War pictures are normally pretty horrific, so this picture of Japanese pilots having fun with a puppy doesn't seem that traumatic. The guy holding the puppy is Yukio Araki, a kamikaze pilot who just one day later would crash into the USS Brain. The attack would claim 66 of the ship's crew and obviously Yukio as well. Yukio was only 17, knowing he'd be going to his death the next day. The photo has become an iconic symbol of the tragedy of war in Japan. Regardless of the rights and wrongs in war, this image is a reminder that everyone who fights is a human being. Number 3. What looks like John Lennon signing off an autograph to a random fan is actually much, much more. See, this photo was taken on the night that John Lennon was shot dead by crazed fan Mark David Chapman, which is the guy getting the autograph. Chapman had a long-running history with mental illness and used to see tiny men in his walls who he was God over, but sometime after found Jesus and turned his adoration for Lennon to hate after his comments about the Beatles being bigger than Jesus. This spurred a long obsession with killing him. Number 2. Look at this smiley guy. Seems like he'd be a real fun time at the bar. Too bad he's a Nazi. 
This photo of Joseph Goebbels being cheery and fun during a 1933 League of Nations meeting quickly takes a turn when you see the next photo that was taken of him. What happened? Well, in between shots, he found out the photographer was Jewish. The shift from cheer to hatred almost leaps out at you. Keep in mind, this would be the guy who would mastermind propaganda to convince a whole nation that Jews were Satan incarnate. So remember, even monsters can smile. Number 1. This blurry bit of security camera footage actually pictures one of the most disturbing abductions in recent history. Pictured as 2-year-old James Bulger being led away by 10-year-old Robert Thompson, abducting him from the New Strand Shopping Center. Robert, along with another 10-year-old boy, then took James over 4 kilometers away and tortured him to death. The body was found near an abandoned railroad station with James suffering 10 skull fractures and 42 injuries. The list of torture included throwing a can of paint at his head, putting batteries in his mouth, kicking and stomping him, and lastly, dropping a 10 kilogram railroad fish plate on his head. So sad. Well, anyways, we got a question for you. What's the most awkward time you've ever walked in on somebody naked? Let us know in the Reddit page link below and you might be featured in a future countdown. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. What links would you go to just so you could avoid a dentist appointment? Probably not the same links as this 12-year-old French boy. When the boy disappeared, it sent people into a panic, but he quickly turned up claiming that he escaped a kidnapper who'd taken him almost 100 miles away.